All right, welcome back. Ready for three more games. Found our next opponent. Let's kick some ass. Hm. That's a pretty decent, bit heavy on the rally. But if we have a drone and a line and a torch, I am inclined to keep this, especially on the draw. Because we have a, a couple of draw steps to draw into our third power and or additional early units. But I'm not 100% sure actually if this hand is a correct keep or not. It's close between keeping it and redrawing it. Might just be slightly better to redraw it, especially because of the double rally, since the double rally turns this hand kind of into a good six card hand. And our redraw gives us seven cards, so maybe should be redrawing this. I am not 100% sure. That's like a good way to try and evaluate hands for redrawing or not redrawing. Like if you have a card in hand that is virtually dead, like for example a second rally when your deck barely ever wants to, or um, a card that is bad uh, in a lot of situations, like a card that is super expensive, like for example if you have an Ikar Ikaria in a deck and you have an Ikaria in your opening hand, then um, your hand has to be really good to not redraw it, simply because having that Ikaria in your opening hand is almost the same as having a 6 card opening hand, which you would definitely redraw into a random 7 card hand if you could. So um, maybe try to look at it that way when you uh, try to evaluate uh, whether to redraw or not. It's like definitely one of the ways, one of the things to ask yourself and look at it when considering to redraw or not. And yeah, we're getting punished for that lackluster keep. Um, the more I think about it, I think uh, you should probably never uh, keep double rally hands for the mentioned reason that the second rally is almost always kind of dead. And the hand was solid but not great, so um, if I would have like the perfect six cards plus a rally, uh, plus a second rally, Maybe it's fine to keep it, but if all we have is a solid six cards plus a dead card, then we should probably be redrawing. So this game is totally on me. But once again, a nice uh, opportunity to uh, discuss some theory and make a point and show you guys a couple of things not to do and why not to do them. And also, immediately get punished for doing them wrong. So I'm not here to show you how to be perfect. I'm here to uh, show you how to get better and learn from your mistakes. And everybody makes them even if you are in like the top three. As I was last season in the game you still make mistakes. Games like this are too complex and complicated to never make any mistakes, basically. So the question is, what is our best option here? Should we just queen or... Maybe? I think we should queen. Queen into rally might still just kind of win this game. I think we have to leave one guy back because otherwise we are dead. So yeah. I think leaving the queen back is good, because if he doesn't force us to jump block, I'd rather have a queen left than something else. Maybe you should have left a Jido back, actually. This is so bad, like why would you block a grenade in over a Jido? That is just so wrong. But yeah, it should have probably left a Jido back rather than a queen. Since that's the better uh, unit to not die if he doesn't force us to jump up. Because if he he might just die if he tries to like make a lethal attack here and force us to jump up. Since Yeah, that's exactly what happened, so and why would he silence Queen rather than 
Jado, like, this guy is not making any sense. I really hope we can punish him next turn. Nope, we can't. Or can we? Like, he blocks those. Yeah, he just goes to six and loses, like, his enforcer. Which is not good enough. Guess I just. Shadowlands guide, pass and hope we kind of get there. It's not that likely, but I think that's our best option. Since attacking just killed us. And maybe that way he makes a mistake. A bad attack. For example. Interesting. So if I touch that, he has like five blockers. So one, two, three, four, five, nine, twelve. Yeah, he's exactly dead if he doesn't have anything else. That's pretty nice, actually. And we have Torch to potentially prevent him from killing us on the backswing if things go really out of hand. Basically, if he has a Desert Marshal here, we lose the game. If he doesn't, we win the game. So, um,. That was kind of the hope. We play guide to create two more attackers while well, he only plays one more blocker and then we have exactly a uh, have a shot to draw stuff like torch, uh, one drop with charge or a rapid shot to deal lethal through his blockers. So yeah, we managed to turn this bad keep around into a victory against a really powerful draw. Boom. That was a pretty impressive game and shows how uh, being patient and knowing when to go all in really pays off with this deck. So I really like the games we're getting uh, a lot of really great situations to showcase very important things with the deck uh, no matter how the games end like even the three losses in the first video uh, managed to showcase a bunch of really nice plays and decisions and uh, critical stuff with the deck, I think. So that's great. Hope you guys uh, can appreciate and enjoy that even when we are losing. Okay, so this is a redraw. Four power is already almost always a redraw with the deck and Dark Return as one of the three, three non-power cards makes it even more of a redraw. This is a really great hand, like a pretty, pretty great 1, 2, 3 punch with trick backup to not get stalled out. It's awesome. And this is actually one of my favorite turn 1 1 drops in the deck, simply because it attacks so much better into everything. Drone gets uh, embarrassed by two twos, um, Pyronite and the other stuff all trade with so many like uh, one ones like opposing drones, um, Temple Scribes, Initiate of the Sands, all that stuff. And Knife Drag is just kind of the perfect turn one, one drop, I think. So probably Rapid Shot Pyronite because I don't see him not block here. It's unfortunate I would like to deploy assembly line, but it's good that we drew at least one other cheap unit that we can play here, so we don't have to waste our turn for Rapid Shot. Like, I would legitimately consider, if all we had is Rapid Shot and have something else to play, to just play assembly line and pass. Because otherwise it's just so bad in terms of tempo. <laughs> so I guess here... We want to attack like this, simply because I think he's most likely going to block the instigator. He is not. That is not what I expected. And fairly smart play on his part. Maybe I should have just attacked with the instigator, but then again I'm kind of in that weird spot that I mentioned. So I guess I'll just let that slide that way. It's kind of a bad attack. 
the more I think about it, the best line in that spot is probably what I said for last turn. Just play assembly line and pass. If I had something else to play, the best line probably is to attack with Argonport Instigator if he blocks Torch the Titan to get rid of it. But yeah, draws like Seraph or Combre Healer into Titan are pretty annoying. Um, if you don't have two ways to punch through and if Combre Healer already eats up our uh, Rapid Shot then we are in a tough spot against the Titan. I would have rather drawn Torch first then we could have just Argonport instigated into the healer. He probably blocks anyway because he doesn't want to take the three damage because he can't really afford to. And then we get to torch the healer without losses and have rapid trot for the Titan, which is what you want to try and preserve your rapid trots for. But what can you do? And yeah, I think attacking here is not worth it. Although I think we can attack with our Argonport. If he's smart, he's and doesn't need the initiate. He probably blocks with initiate and healer to um, punish us for trying to torch his healer for free. But he doesn't either because he needs the healer, uh, needs the initiate, or because he's too bad to see it. Which is great because then we at least get to uh, get rid of the of one of the annoying high health blockers that. Makes, makes it bad for us to Alpha Strike. Because now we can actually start Alpha Striking next turn, especially if we draw a power for Queen and he doesn't play another like high health blocker, which he does. So yeah, he got us into a pretty good pinch here. And it seems like we are not doing a whole lot of winning in this video, but that's okay. I've done enough winning off camera yesterday with the deck to not uh, to not be bothered too much by having some negative uh, variance right now it's just a bit unfortunate that all of it happens in the video but oh well um. I think that's the best option we have Then again, we probably don't really have any option in this game, so... We're just dead. He got us. Can't turn all of the... bad games. Alright, one more. Hopefully that goes better for us for once. And yeah, keep in mind, I have the results, the stats, to back up my claim that this is uh, one of the best decks in the game right now. Um, a small sample size of six games where you're running bad on camera doesn't change that. So don't be uh, scared away from giving this deck a try and grinding out the variants. It's gonna be really rewarding, trust me. Jido is part of the reason how I got to uh, rank 3 last, se uh, last season, and also part of the reason how I got to 17th the season before that, and also how I got back from below top 100 to top 20 yesterday. So, even though the deck is not doing a whole lot of impressing right now on camera, it did so plenty off, uh, off camera, so. Don't forget that. Especially before uh, swarming to the comment section, uh, complaining about how uh, bad the deck looked in the games and how how I could barely win games. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we're gonna win this game pretty easily, I think. If, our, if the first thing our Stone Scar Burn opponent does in relevant stuff is Impending Doom, then 
he is not gonna do a lot of winning against Jito. I mean, that matchup kind of favors Jito already anyway. Because they're so slow and reactive and have no sweepers and no assembly line or stuff to match our going wide that it's hard for them already and with a draw like that it's basically impossible for them but yeah it's a bit unfortunate to win a game where your opponent basically doesn't do anything it's not not the kind of games I want in a video. It's basically what I mentioned, like, everybody can win this game, it's like, no skill or art required to win a game like that, it's just won by itself, or half lost by our opponent and his draw rather than what we did. Alright, not the, not the best result over the uh, last six games, but yeah. Um, I hope you uh, learned learned plenty from that Jido update and also from our losses and how to make the best out of your losses and uh, try to win with Jido, even if you sometimes don't. And as usual, if you did, please like and subscribe and follow me on social media for more updates and input. And Thanks for your support, thanks for watching, I'm out, see you next time.